Let's break down how to move in kendo so we can have stronger and faster techniques. The purpose of this video is to analyze how each legs work with each other in order to create fluidity and power for our techniques. And of course, I want to share some kendo tips towards the end on how we can do it better. Kendo footwork for me has been really important to research and practice myself, and I hope you can take advantage of that. Please let me know down in the comments what do you struggle with when it comes to footwork. Kendo footwork is very unique and it has very different elements from what we do on a day-to-day -day walking. For example, we avoid swinging our body left to right or landing on our heels. So let's break down how kendo footwork works in order to approach our opponent or to do a technique. First of all, from Kamae, you should be able to move without any excessive motion. I'm not gonna go too much into depth with this because I already made a video on how to set up your feet for Kamae, so you can go ahead and watch that. I just wanna make sure that you understand that you should be able to immediately move as soon as you just lift your foot on the direction you're going. And for me, the footwork done in Kendo for stepping and attacking, the mechanics are the same, just the intensity and the timing of things will change. But overall, I believe that the fundamentals are the same. The back leg pushes and the front leg pulls. So I like to break Kendo footwork on three stages. The first one is where the Fumikiri would happen and it's starting the motion. We start the movement by pushing with your back leg and releasing the front leg. The most important part here is that you want to continue that push with the back leg all the way until the foot leaves the ground. I say this because it's very common to see people put all the way on the front leg, landing on that leg, and then it's harder for you to keep that momentum going and you're forced to push yourself up from the front leg. So it becomes a little bit difficult to have fluid work forward. So you push with your back leg and at the very end, you do a little bit of an extra push. We call this Fumikiri. I already made a video about that. You can go watch that as well. A quick way for you to understand what happens at this moment is try from Kamae pushing yourself back. You're gonna notice if you want to avoid leaning that you're gonna do a little bit of an extra push. I say going backwards because I feel that for going forward, it's easier for people to overcompensate by just leaning forward and they end up just dragging their back leg. If you continue pushing with the back leg all the way until the foot lifts the ground, your body's gonna come straighter, you're gonna have power from your body and you're going to avoid putting all the work on the front leg, which takes me to stage two. Stage two is where the Fumikomi would happen and the fumikomi is not about making a loud noise. It's not about putting a lot of force or emphasis on that leg down. It's to pull you forward. So if you have good support from your back leg, your height should remain the same and your front leg, all it's going to do is just pull you forward to keep the momentum going. Don't worry about making a loud sound when you're doing fumikomi, just worry about keeping that momentum going. I will make another video about how this footwork and techniques relate to each other so we can explore that further there. But in the meantime, just understand that Fumikomi is not about hitting down on the ground, but instead it's about pulling you forward. Even though I say stage one and stage two, they happen one after the other, sometimes they overlap. So especially when you're doing a long step, your right foot is gonna touch the ground before your left foot leaves the ground. So you want to make sure that you keep pushing all the way to the end and you do that fumikiri, that little extra push, because that's going to help you on stage three, which is to bring your foot forward, hikitsuke. And there's a couple of things you can do to make it easier for yourself. First, if you did stage one correctly, where you push all the way to the end, that foot is going to be lighter, so it's gonna be easier to bring it forward, it's gonna come with momentum. But in my mind, the way I like to do it is I like to think about re-engaging my back foot as quick as possible. You see this happening when people do kote men. From kote to men, you see that the foot comes quicker if they're trying to do it quicker and trying to keep their body straight. So in my head, what I like to do is I like to think that I'm going to step again by making sure that my back leg is there to keep pushing me forward. Unfortunately for this, you have to practice it. You have to do it over and over. But I think that if you keep in mind that you have to re-engage that foot, like you're going to do another technique, it will help you bring that foot faster, continue the momentum, and make sure that you have the power you're gonna need if you need to do another technique. I know it's easier said than done, but I'm going to say, if you make sure that you keep in mind one of these things at a time and you work on them, you're gonna be able to build up your footwork stronger and faster to have support behind your technique. The main reason why people overcompensate by hitting harder with the hands is because they don't have enough support from their feet. Take some time to work on your footwork if you want stronger and faster kendo. Now, because everybody always wants to be faster, let me share with you a little bit of insight on how to do faster footwork. Or at the very least, to make your opponent think 
that you're faster than you are. If you can in your own, practice starting moving slowly and ending sharp and fast. Meaning you start creating momentum and at the very end you pull your leg forward, squeak, and sharp as you can without any excess motion. A lot of times the secret to speed is not being the quickest on accelerating from zero, but instead creating momentum before your opponent does. So in a lot of successful techniques, you're gonna see that there's a slow momentum and then an explosion of energy. And a lot of times this little momentum will create a reaction from your opponent, but because you already have momentum, you have the advantage. And if you're able to come in slowly and control, you may be able to close the distance without your opponent noticing, which can be a big plus. Also work on having a command that will allow you to have a quick movement without any tails or excessive motion. Your legs have to be in the right place and the right muscles have to be engaged in order to make this happen. So if you'd like to explore this a little bit further, you might wanna check out this video I made on how to set up your legs for Kamai. Let me know down in the comments, what do you struggle the most when it comes to footwork, if you think I forgot something, please let me know down in the comments below. And if you would like to keep getting kendo tips your way or be part of one of my live streams, make sure you're subscribed to the channel. Please hit the like button and share this with someone you want they can to improve. Thank you very much for watching.